are here with another edition of our Instant Reaction Post Game Show. Vince is not here today, but we have two very special guests, the Defenders of the Bank, Philly, and the Scarf. Welcome, guys. Thank you for having us. It's exciting. We're yeah. beyond thrilled to be here, Connor. Thank you for inviting <laughs> us on. Thank you so it's much. It's a good night, man. It's a good night. And speaking of which, it's our first ever like night broadcast. We're That's past great. our bedtime, and it's the best time ever. It's a bit chilly tonight. Oh, it's beautiful to be back at the bank. Are you kidding? It could be snow, rain, hail, sleet, doesn't matter. If you guys don't know already, these are the wonderful Defenders of the Bank. If you haven't listened to their podcast, go do it now. Great <laughs> listen every week. So, guys, 2-1, LAFC, Colorado. Should we just get right into it? Let's do it. Let's take care of business, Connor. So, first of all, before we get started, we have a tweet to show you guys. We asked you guys, what, how are we feeling about today's match? And you guys responded. Let's see what you guys felt. Look at that poll. 75% say we're going to bounce back. Manifesting the result. Absolutely. Manifesting the result right there. There we go. So I think the black and gold faithful think we're going to bounce back. Do you, guys, do you guys think so too? At the end of the day, even though we were last place coming into this game, we're not a last place team. No. It just it was a matter of circumstance. We were about to bounce back. Colorado has never beaten us no. in Bank of California Stadium. It has never happened. I don't care about how successful they've been since Robin Frazier has taken over the mantle. They weren't going to come into the bank and disappoint our faithful. Why? Because 67% of our fans were in the building today, and they let Colorado know what's up. I mean, as the great Alexi Lala says. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Go <laughs> on. LAFC is a super club <laughs> in MLS. Look, I think our club is super. I think our club is even more super when you have Diego Rossi, Carlos Vela on the pitch at the same time, and we saw what happened those first 60 minutes. What I heard when I was there in the stadium, more than the 32-52, more than 67% of the capacity in attendance, I heard the rest of MLS shaking in their boots. They there saw what can happen when we have our two designated players on the pitch at the same time. There we go. So, going into what we call our instant reaction show, we do this thing called headlines. Let's go. And you guys want to go first? Absolutely. All right, JR, what is Look, your headline for today's match? My headline is easy. We were shoulder to shoulder at Bank of California Stadium once again. Are you kidding me? Most of those fully vaccinated sections, Philly and I, we were watching, we were looking at the crowd, and we thought, oh, my God, there's so many people here. It was so good to hear the chorus of the black and gold faithful, the 3252, but most importantly, everybody else in the stadium as well, to feel like we were back at the bank and actually have the atmosphere that we have had for the first three years of our club. It was a beautiful thing. The headline to me, the bank was electric tonight. That's amazing. Philly? 67% of 22,000 equates to 14,740 in attendance. And it was loud. It felt like it was 22,000. And it was fantastic. Our boys have had somewhat of a hill to climb over the course of the past couple of matches. But in Bank of California Stadium, we have won one. We have tied one, and we have one another. And the 12th man was in full effect. The headline, the 12th man propelling LAFC to that 2-1 victory. It was glorious. 12th place or 13th place or whatever place we're in, third to last in terms of MLS. We're on the rise, baby. We're on the rise. Oh, come on, we won. You should be more excited, right? Oh, my God. Are you kidding, right? That's I, I was told Philly. to pick up the slack. <laughs> Look, I've, I've told Philly, once he comes out of his shell, he's going to be a really good podcaster, so it's going to be fun for all there, of us. There we go. My headline would be, put away the pitchforks. We got three points. <laughs> right? right? You know, because as a lot of you may know, a lot of people on social media have been happy with with LAFC's performances recently. True. This was the LAFC that you guys say we know, we love, and we're at the top of our game when, when the, the whole team is healthy and fit. So we got three points. I'm happy with that. May not have been the most convincing game, but still, three points is three points. Uh, look, a Aaron Rodgers said it best, right, when he spelled it out. R-E-L-A-X. Relax. Relax. Carry the four. It's fine. When, what we saw today was Bob Bradley and the black and gold LAFC on the pitch telling all of the faithful, 
Relax. Relax. We got this. We're good. He's not wrong. I mean, we came out of the box hot. Right off of the kickoff, we had an attempt, a header that just goes above the crossbar. Fair it took enough. us, what, only 15 minutes to get on the scoring board? Corey Baird with a beautiful dime to Diego Rossi. And granted, he didn't exactly knock the stitches <laughs> out of the ball, but it was enough to go past Yarbrough. And as a result of that, LAFC takes the first goal of the game instantly. We're off to the races. Well, speaking of good moments of the match, we do this thing called stock rising. What is your stock rising for this match? All right, for me, pretty simply, stock rising, Kim Moon Hwan. I have to be honest, I know he didn't score a goal, I know he didn't assist yeah. on a goal, oh, but when I say Kim Moon Hwan, the fireworks start because when he comes <laughs> into the match, the fireworks began. I love how Bob presses him all the way up. He looks so potent on offense. He knows what to do when pressing in the attack. And to have somebody to come into the club here in the first year and to be able to do what he does and fit so seamlessly into what we've seen now. Now that he's back fully healthy, the knee seems to be okay. I know he's not getting starts yet, but all due respect to Tristan, I think we're gonna start to see a new moon rising over Bank of California Stadium pretty soon. My man here is always gonna have the hot takes, Connor, but I gotta bring you the most obvious one of all, okay. Diego Rossi, the golden boot winner of last season, coming on strong, hitting a brace. Look, we've played so many games without Carlos Vela. We've relied on Edward Atuesta in the midfield. We're relying on Diego Rossi to punch the ball on the back of the net, and the stock is rising. That young man deserves to play in Europe, and the way he can do that is by succeeding in Major League Soccer. And maybe he was slow coming out of the gates, but as a result of this match and previous efforts, Diego Rossi's got three goals on the season. Diego Rossi is my stock rising. Well, you're saying he, he deserves to play in Europe. Do you think that Diego Rossi will move away from LAFC this summer? There's a decent possibility, and John Thorrington has said all throughout the entire history of our club, we want to bring these young players in, we want to develop them, and we want to sell them off. And he said something recently, maybe we lose Diego Rossi on our way to the MLS Cup, but that is what we have to be adjusted to. You said it on our podcast, you're not used to that, a lot of us aren't used to that, but we have to adjust to the reality that that is a possibility. If he goes off, we're going to celebrate that because it is a success for our club. Why? Because it's an injection of capital into LAFC, which will allow us to bring in other players. If he goes off, we'll bring in other talent. If he doesn't, whatever. We're still good one way or another. And let's be honest, Connor, we're all Amedia fans right now. We're hoping they win that <laughs> yeah. promotion Ryan. tournament. So we'll we're see gonna... what happens as of watch July party. 1st, the new transfer watch window. Party. Right? I've never seen a La Liga 2 watch party right now, but I think we got to reopen gotta, free play, yeah. reopen the bank and Just fields. The celebrations. And Almedia watch party going on here. Absolutely. <laughs> going, on, going off of Philly, I got to say my stock rising would be as simple as execution. You know, the, the game against Houston, the game against Seattle, the game against the Galaxy. Common theme was execution, sloppy passes, not shooting the ball as much as one would hope. And, you know, if you don't shoot, you don't score, right? Look, we're, we're in the town of where Wayne Gretzky made hockey a big deal and you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. That was Wayne Gretzky's quote. But let me give you a quote from the great Casey Stengel, the manager of the New York Metropolitans <laughs> from the early years. Go Mets. They asked him after his team set the record in losses in a season, uh, they made like five errors in a day, and they asked him, hey, how do you feel about your team's execution? And he said, I'm in favor of it. So here's the thing. What we saw a lot of LAFC fans early on in the season, they were for some reason in favor of the doom and the gloom. Let's fire Bob. Let's rebuild. Let's tear it all down. What we saw today is exactly why this front office and this whole club knows what they are doing. We kept the band together. I can't wait to see what we can do. Hopefully we don't lose Diego Rossi on our way to MLS Cup, but 2-1 today looking as good as we have all season in those first 60 minutes. I, I agree 100%, but, but I, we really did go over ground rules when, when before we started, and the one rule is don't talk about the Mets. <laughs> oh. No, no, no. I've always been told on our podcast I can't talk about Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. Oh, so no. He had the, to find a way to mention I, it. I do I it every time. Scarf. I'm so sorry. I've, I've even been booed. Not that we're supposed to talk about your producer talking about us in our ear, but <laughs> he just booed me right in our ear right now. So, look, uh, all I have to say is this. The, the ground rule for Bank of California Stadium is that we don't lose. We've lost four regular season there matches in our history yep. here. And bringing it right back to tonight, Philly, you mentioned it. 
We don't lose to the Colorado Rapids at home. We don't lose at home, period. And tonight just showed that once again. And, Connor, here's the interesting thing. The Colorado Rapids have never won at Bank of California Stadium. Never. But interestingly enough, since 2019, they've had the best road record in Major League Soccer since Frazier took over the mantle. You wouldn't believe it. Colorado, of all teams, with the best record on the road. Over the course of this season, they've been 1-0-1 with two clean sheets. Yeah. Two clean sheets, courtesy of Yarbrough, who was the backup goalkeeper for Club Leon, a club that we all know fairly well. Yeah. But they couldn't maintain that. And history does have a, ch a chance of repeating itself. And as a result of that, Colorado still cannot win at Bank of California Stadium. Well, we're currently on a high note because we're winning. We're talking about stock, uh, stock rising. But... It's got on a little, little more somber tone. Stock falling. What would be your stock falling for today's game? I would have to say the Colorado Rapids. Everybody was in favor of them <laughs> saying that, hey, they're going to be a great team. They, they had 10 points. They, they maintained. Look, they, they tied their first game against Dallas. They, they lost to Austin, and then they went on a three-game winning streak. All of a sudden, people are touting Colorado to be this team coming out of nowhere, a team that is incorporating the young people. You got Cole Bassett, Sam Vines, two of the top 22 players under the age of 22. They're going to take care of business. But in reality, who did they face? Who did they win against? They won against Houston, a team that is more than likely the doormat yeah. of the Western Conference. Who did they beat? They didn't beat anybody. So it's well, my, my words are Colorado Rapid stock is the one that's falling. JR. Look, I appreciate that take. I'm going to give you one better. He always it's, tries to do that, It's folks. the entire MLS. Oh, when they're watching wait. this game, you see the first 60 minutes, and you see the most feared team in Major League Soccer. No team is as deep and as talented from 1 through 11 as LAFC is. But I have to say one other thing. Stock falling. I don't know if you saw that match in Carson today, my friend. <laughs> but stock is falling near the top of the table in the Western Conference. There we go. I, I don't know if you saw the goal differential, but it wasn't great. Last time I checked, if Chicha doesn't get service, Chicha can't <laughs> score. But we don't need service to score. We can set it up. We can do things that no other team in Major League Soccer can. So stock falling. The entire rest of Major League <laughs> the Soccer. The entirety of Major League with, Soccer. With a little, little dash of just Carson on the side. <laughs> there we go. Now, now I feel weird because now I feel like I, I'm, I'm picking against LAFC now. But I got to say, my stock falling would be fullbacks. You know, Cheeky Palacios and Tristan Blackman. You know, we all know their ability is through the roof. And their potential ability is even higher. But, you know, these past few games haven't been too convincing. They, they are obviously great in supporting the attack. But defensively, they're, they're being caught out more than a couple times a game. So, so, go ahead, Philly. Go no, ahead, no, no, go ahead, brother. Okay. <laughs> so, so my thing is, if you watch towards the end of the match, we actually switched to five in the back with the two wing backs kind of pushing up when we subbed in Moon and Farfan. And what I think is it's a strategic move by Bob Bradley where he looks at it. He starts out with four in the back. But what about before that, though? No, 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 I'm with you. He starts out with four in the back, and I thought we got as good as we could from Tristan while he was still in the match. Tristan is an excellent on-ball defender, but it's times where he's caught with guys behind him, times where he has to track back where I'm a little nervous about Tristan, but I will say this. You're right in our starting fullbacks. Maybe didn't have the best match that they've had before, but look at who we are able to bring in. It's just like going back to what I just said. We are the deepest team in Major League Soccer. When you can bring on a guy who's had U.S. men's national team experience in Marco Farfan, and I was had South Korean national team experience in Kim Moon Hwan, and those guys aren't starting for your Major League Soccer club. We're not talking about they're not starting in one of the but, big five. But 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 they're the question is. Here. So if, if now, if the stock falling is starting fullbacks, Tristan and Cheeky, why aren't Farfan and Kimun Juan starting? Yes, Kimun Juan injured, but let's say Farfan. They're adjusting to Bob's schemes. Bob isn't going to bring anybody right off the bat until he feels that they are uh, complimentary and well-adjusted to the system. You want to talk about stock falling? Look, Cheeky's been inconsistent this season. There's no doubt about that. But I got to see firsthand Cheeky fighting for the ball. Cheeky doing a lot of really good things on defense to win back those balls against the opposition. But is Cheeky it good enough? 
is it good enough? Cheeky has a lot of room to grow. And Moon, what I like about him, he is not scared to make attempts. He's not scared to take shots. Within, what, a minute of his first appearance against the Galaxy, he had a shot from well outside of the box, something that we've been scorning LAFC for not having. He gets a shot outside of the box on a yellow card. I want to see this kid succeed. But until then, it's still Cheeky still has the opportunity. Tristan still has the opportunity. But as Scarf said, we've got a deep team. And you know what? I feel very comfortable knowing that we got Farfan. He's a great player, a, a youthful player. We got a guy like Moon. These guys coming off the bench to seal the deal as they did today. I like where we are with How this. many games do you think it would take for Cheeky to be inconsistent, in, continue to be inconsistent where you make that swap from Cheeky Let to me Marco? It, the great Max Bredos will tell you with all his Combate America experience <laughs> that he has. Styles make fights, my friend. Okay. And I think what we have the ability to do with LAFC is to match up style for style. So if we've got a team that we see that likes to press on the wings, we have a certain combination of guys in there. If we have a team that we know we can attack from the wings by having those fullbacks move up, that's what I think we do. So personally, what I'll tell you is this. I don't think Cheeky has been inconsistent enough to lose that starting spot because from what I understand, Farfan, Moon, Tristan, they've all had a lot more experience on the opposite side. It's really Cheeky's job to lose on that one side. Now, have we had players come in and play better today? Farfan, I thought he looked great. I didn't think Farfan looked as good in the previous match. So I'll say this. You kind of ride the hot hand, right? And you play, you play the style that's dealt in front of you. And I thought today, with what we saw from Colorado, the adjustment that Bob made by moving back to that 5-3-2 and having our two wingbacks move up the way they did with Farfan and Moon, that was how we could close it out. But what we did when we were scoring those goals, completely different style. And that's all due to the three-time in three-decade MLS Coach of the Year, Bob Bradley. The thing that the boys need to do is be have their mind in the game consistently. As the second half began, we gave up a goal immediately on a beautiful pass from Diego Rubio to Michael Barrios. And usually over over the course of Colorado's games, it was the other way around. It was Barrios feeding Rubio. So we need to make sure that we don't have these lapses in defense. We saw that against the Galaxy. We saw that against Seattle when there was nobody on the far post. We can play really well in the back line for a while, but there are certain instances where, where there's, I don't know if it's a lack of maturity or whatever the case may be. They're not Errors. keeping their... There, there could be errors, but here's the difference. Last year, we were awful on set-piece defense. Colorado, over the course of their three-game winning streak, scored three goals off set-pieces. Granted, we were pretty much a goose egg in that regard until the Seattle game. They defended those set-pieces real well. Price, the, uh, the, the Scottishman on, on Colorado, Great set piece player. Scotsman? She's a Scotsman. That's the one. Let's get there. There yeah, we go. Na national team, <laughs> Wolverhampton Academy product. There we go. He set his boys up well, but the LAFC defense thwarted a lot of those efforts. If it wasn't for the first six minutes of the match, I would say the back line played a pretty good game. Well, I think we can all agree that the depth in this team is immense. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed and pitch pitched in with you with your comments, your reactions. Where, where can we find look, you guys look, on, on it's social the depth media? depth of 110 football. There we go. They have, unfortunately, Vince not able to make it out, but you can still bring in some star players off the bench like this. We had a great two, time. Two young studs. Coming on at <laughs> Defenders of the Bank on Instagram and Facebook, at Defend the Bank on Twitter. Make sure... Uh, yeah, make sure. Oh yeah, you, you can are, check uh, out right here. Yeah, boom. Is, You're I, ended. There wait, we go. Down the, there. Down there. Right LAFC there. underscore the scarf. D-O-T-B Philly is all the He's not even going to stretch over the thing. He's just going to look pretty over here behind. But, uh, Connor, we had a great time tonight. Thank yeah, you guys fun. so much, and I hope to, to have you guys on sometime soon. Love to be here, man. Thank you so much. Vince, hope you get better, buddy, and hopefully we were able to pick up the slack for you. So for you guys watching at home, make sure you tune in next Friday for the 110 Football Show. Also, next Tuesday, Max and Vince podcast on LAFC's YouTube channel. And Saturday, join us again live for a virtual tailgate on the LAFC app and the instant reaction post game here on YouTube. You won't want to miss it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to the Defenders of the Bank. See you next time.